So all at home, if you could just bear with us for a few minutes, we're just setting up a couple more tables because more people showed up in person than anticipated. So two minutes, please. <laughs> all right, thank you. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, thank you. All right, can, it, can everyone hear me at home? Can someone say something? I just want to hear the sound. I can hear you, Bob. Thank you, John. All right, so okay, we got sound working, we got video working. Um, the camera we have is a 360, so you'll see the big picture up top. And then as people talk, it should jump around a little bit, but if not, we can switch to the other camera. Sorry if I'm swinging my hand. But that's all right. I can read the news. Yes, yeah, so it's on the owl now. It's not swinging. Yeah, I got it. Is it swinging? Got my Hello? cheat sheet. Owl? That's right on my hand. Who? Who? That's good as him. The Ted Lasso joke. That's a good one. You guys are staring right at me. I know. Can I start it's, swinging around? I don't know. Well, it's kind of just turned to you, actually, believe it or not. So. Yeah. It's not swinging to me. It's but. Oh, well, I can yell louder. But it's going to get the side of your head. Well, like you said, we're going to go back to this one and get a wide angle of that. So. Well, we've got it on a gallery, not a uh, so, hot speaker. So. so, either way, we can jump back to this one and then mm -hmm. we'll use that for now and then we can clarify that afterwards. We have mic, we have speaker, so we mean whoever wants to Hi. run it and start talking. Thank you, Bob. Got to get can Catherine here now? She has yet the presentation up. You missed that.
Here we go. I'm just double checking that Cap did Catherine say she could hear? Can can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. You just want to? Can you hear when Melissa talks? Can you hear me now? I got. It's a little fainter, but can barely we can hear a little bit. Yep. Okay. Um. Call the meeting to order. Public can access via WebEx. Meeting number is two three four nine zero six five seven eight three zero. Password is Burlington with the capital B. That will. Steve, someone has the agenda. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, we can approve February 7th meeting minutes. So moved. Mark the second. Second, Carl. Second. Carl. Yeah, I don't have my usual list in front of me. Apologies, but I think I have all the voting votes. Um, Mrs. Monaco. Yes, I'm here. Uh, Mr. Denizio? Yes. Mr. Foss? Yes. Mrs. Bond? I think she stepped away. Right. Oh, she has, okay. Uh, Ms. Simon? Aye. Who had moved? Ms. Priest? Yes. Ms. Acuna? Yes. Mr. Rosenblatt? Yes. Dr. Conti? Yes. Uh, Ms. Kasha? Yes. Mr. Sagarino? Yes. And Mr. Volano? Yes. All right. Uh, and I'm a yes. Twelve. Uh, yes, one abstention. Right. Um, we have a couple members of the public. I think I saw on the WebEx. Does anyone have any public comments? Um, to the chair, all members, and then Dora and Lydia. Oh, okay. I thought I saw Sharon. Mm -hmm. Okay, no worries. Yep. All right. Mike, is that you? Yeah. So now we'll have the financial update. So there were um, three documents that were put within the uh, share file that Aiden had sent out. The first one is the NISCO. Uh, this is for, I believe, four separate um, reimbursable expenses that were listed in our budget. I apologize, I don't have them in front of me. Um, but there, like I said, that amendment was in there. There's four of them. We would like to get going specifically on Hancock, which is a site survey. Um, but again, this is this is the first of what we'll see is a couple of amendments for services that the NISCO will need to provide us in order to get us through our conditions feasibility. Um, I think last time we did all, all of them yep. together. If you yeah. want to do it that way, yeah. okay. <laughs> the next one, Doran Whittier invoice number four. So this is for, this is Danisco's, uh, excuse me, Doran Whittier's time through the month of January. Uh, that is in the amount of 17,357. Again, invoices in there. And then we have Denisco's invoice number one in the amount of 29,545. And that is for time in the month of February. Um, so Doran Whittier didn't have, we didn't, weren't able to pull one together for that month. So we'll, we will reconvene next month, but these are the three documents for financial up for vote. Any I'll make a motion to accept it's to approve is the word is that, that what we need to approve yep. these invoices and amendments is that the one amendment two invoices and two invoices as listed in the documents second second any discussion questions okay take a vote uh mrs monaco i mr denizio yes Mr. Foss? Aye. Mrs. Bond? Aye. Ms. Simon? 
Yes. Ms. Trees? Aye. Mr. Cuna? Yes. Mr. Rosenblatt? Yes. Ms. Dr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Kasha? Yes. Ms. Sagarino? Yes. Mr. Volano? Yes. Ms. Yes. yes. I believe that's 13. Yes. Motion okay. passed. All right, and then this is just a snapshot of the overall project budget. So last SBC meeting, we had approved um, a couple of invoices and a budget revision request. So what you see under the updated budget column, which I don't know if anyone can see the cursor, that reflects the amounts that we revised the budgets to. So those course correlate with the forecasted costs that we had shared previously. Um, do you wanna note this budget? every month will always be reflective of the previous month's budget. Um, so this is where we stand currently. So again, as of last month, we've expended, you know, $44,000 and we had, um, you know, a, a little over a million in contract remaining with still uncommitted balance of 401,000 is where we're at now, um, altered by today's approvals. So this is just an overall project budget that you'll see every month. Um, Ms. Simon. Just for explanations as we as we go through this process, it, it looks like the transfers um, on the first line for the OPM feasibility study were subtracted from that total and that the other three additions, the feasibility study, the environmental insight and the other are, are added in and those added up to balance each other out. So is that going to be something ongoing that as we spend money in categories, it will come out of a different line item. Is that, am I understanding it correctly? Not necessarily. So what we did here is we were adjusting. So the original budget line is what your agreement with the MSBA was okay. up front, right? So that's your project funding agreement. What we did with that budget revision last month is we took a forecast of you know, Doran Whittier's contract, what Danisco's contract was, what we were projecting for additional costs that we each were going to have, you know, for us, it's a couple of um, uh, estimates as well as the um, add-on for our website. Danisco under environmental and site was, you know, what we're forecasting there for those reimbursable expenses. So we were realigning the budget in that okay. manner. It's a realignment. It was a realignment. So there is no money added. Yeah. 1.5 million on both. We won't necessarily do that. So, for example, the amendment we just approved for mm -hmm. Denisco, that will be applied and committed against the environmental and site line. Okay. So you'll see that under the contract amount that will increase here by the 109,000 and and change, which will okay. only affect that line. So. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? So next is the existing conditions update, uh, which Nisco will run through, as you all know. Um, Nisco was here last week, was it last week? Last Wednesday. Last Wednesday, and um, do the slideshow. Just let me know in the... Um, yeah, I'll give you the heads up <laughs> for the next slide. So um, thanks for, I'm Neil Harrigan from Nisco, in case you don't know who I remember who I was from last time. Um, so we had a team of all of our consultants, not all of our consultants, we had a lot of consultants out there. Last Wednesday, we had our civil engineer, we had landscape architects, we had electrical engineers, we had mechanical engineers, plumbing engineers, as well as um, the uh, technology consultants. So we had a, a really good team out there looking at your both buildings, the Pine Glen and the uh, Fox Hill School. Um, and if you could just go to the next slide. And as you know, um, the schools are both very well maintained. Um, they're both approaching 60 years of age, but they've, you've done such a good job maintaining them over the years. A lot of the things like the masonry uh, is still in good shape. Um, you can go to the next slide. I believe you had some window replacement in the late 90s on the school, um, and they're, they're in okay shape. They do have insulated glass, but it is, you know, they, they're 25 years old at this point. So. There's some issues with that. Um, the roof, I think, is relatively new as well in the last couple of decades or so. So you will go? Yeah. What is it? Eight, Eight. years Eight. old. So, um, the next slide. So when you go into the, some of the spaces, just from our perspective, um, the floor is in good shape and the, and the room in general is in good shape, but um, 
this court is undersized. It's only like 3,500 square feet, and our typical gym is about 6,000 square feet. So um, that there's some issues with that. Also, I think the ceiling height is could be a little higher. Typically, we make them 25 feet tall, and I think this is a, a good bit less than that. Um, next, also, I, I think there's very minimal uh, ventilation in that gymnasium. So uh, next, kid, let's go to the next one. Yeah, the kitchen. So we had a, we also had a kitchen consultant out there, John Souza. And he noted that most of the equipment in here seemed to be original, or the majority of it was original. You know, some uh, equipment had been, you know, reached its the end of its life in, in, this, in the in the kitchen. Um, in general, it's, it's clean, but there are some minor uh, health code violations. He noted quite a few of them, but it's it's generally in in decent shape. Uh, the next one is the cafeteria. Uh, cafeteria also. Again, the, the the finishes are. I think the floor is relatively new. It was a replacement at some point, mm -hmm. um, and I think they were replacing some of the lights when we were in there during the, the thing. Um, it doesn't have it does have some barred lights, but there's not really much daylight in the space. Um, the stage has some accessibility issues, and also, I think there are ventilation issues as well because there are ceiling fans in there. It's either that or there maybe it's the air conditioning. That it's the lack of air lack of air. Yeah. <laughs> no, really, really. <laughs> Next slide, please. The library, uh, the library is um, a, it's a little bit undersized. It has a low ceiling. It's very clean and well maintained. Um, the next slide. Now the corridors um, looks like a lot. Of, some of the VCT has been replaced in some of the corridors over the years, um, and the the the, the masonry is in, in good shape as well. Uh, the thing we notice is, is it's kind of like a maze in there. You kind of it's easy to get lost. So I think the design could be more compact. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is just a, to show you. I think you have a bigger program than the building uh, allows you to use. So like every little space gets used. Like these are like two small group spaces that I think were offices or storage spaces in original in the original building. So it kind of leads me to believe that. Um, your program is much larger than, than the spaces you have provided. Uh, the next one, and this is, I think, a sped office where it was carved out of what was a core or one point. So there's some the issues with circulation there. Um, I think that might have been done when you added the modulars. Maybe it was at 2011 or so. The one on the left was we just did last. Oh, you did it last year. Okay. And then the other slide just shows every little space is an off. I mean, you, you, know, you have needs for spaces, lots of space, and anything that was stores was get converted into a, an office. Um, this is a typical classroom. Um, the flooring in here does look a little bit uh, worn out. And as you can see, that the, the the accordion partition and the and the wood movable partition really aren't great for acoustics or for even teaching spaces because there's no way to put up a marker board or whatever on it. Uh, but it is uh, clean and, and well maintained. Other than that, uh, and then this <laughs> slide, really just to show you, there are some leaks we noticed in the ceiling. So I don't know if it's a was a roofing issue or if there's a mechanical piping issue. But it cool. happens in buildings uh, that are this age. And then also just trying to highlight, we do have some accessibility issues, like the stage has no way to get up there if you're in a wheelchair. Uh, the next slide. OK, the Pine Glen School um, again, masonry is in very good condition. Um, the glue lamb beams that are on the exterior are a little bit weathered um, where they're exposed, but there's very minimal rod bases. Uh, the entry canopy is also in, in, in good condition for its age. Next slide. Um, back side. Again, I think there was a window replacement on this school. I don't have the exact date, but I would say probably around 20 years ago. It was in the 90s. Um, also, we noticed that some of the windows have vents, but I, I mechanically I thought they were all blocked up. It was through through wall units. Uh, no, it's just that they're stacked with teaching supplies. OK, okay. Yeah. locked in another way. OK, visually they're functioning. I mean, they're functioning, but visually yeah, it's tough to see them. Yeah, um, and then also we noticed that like there's some doors out of there and it's not doesn't look like it's quite accessible. 
to the paved area because the ramp is mm -hmm. just a minor issue. Um, the next slide, please. The slate flooring is in good shape. It's seamed in the school. Oh, sorry, I missed oh. exterior stair. Okay, sorry, I missed one. Um, you can go back one. We just talked about the stairs. I noticed that the both ends of the school they have an exposed exterior stair, which is can be an issue in weather because it's very slippery and snowing. Even if you try to shovel it, uh, could be an issue. It also limits your interior circulation opportunities having an exterior stair. Um, next slide. The main lobby, um, the slates, the floor, the slate flooring is in good condition, as I said earlier. Uh, and I think they were cleaning when we were there, so there's some, I think some. Uh, I don't know if those wooden boxes are, but I think they came from another classroom. Um, there is a lot of light. It's, it's actually kind of a nice space, the connector between the gym and the uh, and the classroom wing. Uh, it's very bright, but it is a bit of a distance between the two of them. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks, Mike. Uh, again, this gym is even more undersized. I think it's 3,100 square feet. Also, it has low ceilings, and it has backboards that are, I think, at eight feet, eight foot or eight six, something like that. So um, I'm told it's the least desirable gym in the community. So I think you could touch the rim, right? That's I can touch the rim. Did you, you try that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My son's a little better, but I can't. Um, it also has a lot of hard surfaces, so the acoustics are a bit challenging in there because everything's it's either wood or um, concrete block or glass. Next slide is the kitchen. So this is similar to the um, Pine Fox Hill School. All the equipment's mostly original and it is um a lot of them are at the end of life and some of them that might actually not be working um and then as john said there are a few minor code violations i think he might have to do with direct drains from the, uh, the equipment into the into the sanitary system as well as other issues um the next slide please so the cafeteria um wood arches and, and the decking are actually in pretty good shape on the interior in particular um curtain wall windows look like they were modified at some point because there's double glazing and it must have been done in the 90s when they did that window replacement project next slide please the stairs um actually the terrazzo is in very good shape here and i, I like the, the tile pattern it's kind of cool uh, but these the guardrails are a little they're now they're too low for what's required, and there's not enough handrail extensions on the on hand. So if we, in a, in a renovation situation, you have to rebuild the guardrails, stuff like that. Um, next slide, sorry. And the library is, is in the lower level, which I think was a former general storage room. At least showed that on the original prints. It has small, high clear story windows, it's clean and well maintained, but it is a little on the small side as well. Uh, and the next, next slide. It's a typical classroom, um, very clean. Um, it has a ceiling treatment that's kind of like a, a stucco that is probably original. Um, it looks like there have been some technology updates like a smart board, but the intercoms and the other systems might be a little bit outdated. And it's cleaned and well maintained, like uh, all your facilities. And that's all we have. As I was saying, we're we're still compiling our reports. Our consultants are going to be writing reports, and they'll be completed by the end of the month. And we'll include that in our um, PDP. But I think I think overall, and and thank you, Bob. We're going through the existing conditions from a facilities perspective, which um, we first want to commend. Burlington for doing an exceptional job. I mean, this was February vacation and you could see how clean these spaces were, right? Normally the custodians are in there cleaning. And so you've done an incredible job for the spaces that you have. Uh, we've started going through and we've had to create or re redraw all the floor plans for each of the schools to identify. And um, clearly the spaces academically just don't the buildings just do not meet your academic uh, requirements of today so while your buildings are an excellent uh, maintained very well obviously a lot of the um, mechanical equipment etc has exceeded its useful life so we will be doing the repair option only um, analysis and what that would cost you because pretty much everything in these buildings will need to be replaced 
um, accessibility, then you trigger accessibility, fire protection, et cetera. But we just want to say that um, you've, you've made the best that you possibly could with, with these facilities. So we don't see that in every, um, every district. So that's a huge kudos to you guys. Yeah, and maybe just to piggyback on that a little bit is, you know, through the process of looking at the existing conditions, we're going to highlight a lot of things that aren't to current educational standards or accessibility standards. So it might look like, you know, everything wrong with the building, but there's a lot right too. And um, I think Donna, maybe you can give it a little update on the visioning process and the programming process to understand what things have been done right, you know, over Burlington's history, recent history, and how they've delivered education. So. It, it might seem a little like piling on of highlighting all the things that are wrong and maybe to folks that have uh, either taught in the building or have had kids go through the building will understand pretty quickly why this project was highlighted and accepted by the MSBA's program. But a big part of the process is to, to educate the public for those folks that aren't in those buildings every day and be transparent about uh, you know what we're finding through the process and um, a lot of the about a lot about the phase we're currently in is about just finding out facts about the building from the from a maintenance perspective, educational delivery perspective, just rough square footage and collecting a lot of data. And that's just a lot about, you know, what this phase of the project is all about. So um, certainly this month and in the few weeks and months looking forward, it's, it's going to start to end the collection of information and start to reveal options and studies and what that might, uh, how that might inform the next step in the process. Yeah, and just to add the, for requests that you approved tonight, so thank you. One's a survey. Uh, one is uh, traffic, right? One's a traffic study. So that that will be important. It does take some time, but that's an important um, uh, understanding of of what's going on currently, where the pinch points, and then looking forward, right? How can we improve uh, the circulation in and around the community? And uh, the other one is. Another fact finding information, it's called the phase one environmental site assessment, making sure there's a clean, a clean title, there's no underground storage tanks, things like that, that is required. That's really minimal. And then the last one is an AMRAD, which is uh, an abbreviated notice for, oh, I get this wrong every time, resource area delineation. <laughs> um, so, so that one is we're going to be going out and working with Conservation Commission to make sure that we understand all of all of the wetlands and and the mapping and the flagging of that. Um, and we did a preliminary assessment is there's probably a little more wetlands than we originally mm -hmm. thought. And uh, you you cohabitate these wetlands with uh, Wilmington and some areas which I think we've never we were a little surprised. And we've never encountered. No, so yeah. I think going through the permitting process may involve both communities, both condoms, just because it's um, a continuous wetland that mm -hmm. goes from Wilmington. So it's on the northern side of the parking lot. And we knew about the one that was on the perimeter of the uh, softball field, but not so much this one. So, um, so in the next few weeks, they're going to be going through and tagging, flagging, and then we'll have ConCom come over and check it out and we'll submit the iron rad. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, before we move on, if we could just go back for a second to Neil's report and to Steve's comment. Um, I think for many of us, we're very aware that the district has kept the buildings in good shape, that maintenance has been a priority. We've been fortunate that the town has given us the resources to keep them in good shape. And so I, I, I'm i concerned, I wanna make sure, like you have a report, but it, are we gonna then, is that gonna be a part of our communication effort? And because that's what we need people, other people to understand. Yes, they've been taken well care of. And yes, when you walk in, the floors are shiny and they look like they're in good shape and the roof was replaced eight years ago, which town meeting gave us the money for. And, <laughs> these spaces are not big enough for the programs. There are leaks here and there are replacements there and there's access issues here and stuff. So is that the intention with all of this information? The information is needed for the MSBA process, 
in terms of making a decision whether we're going to renovate or, or replace, et cetera. But I also think regardless of what direction we go in, it would be really important to keep the, a summary of that or highlights of that or we somebody came up with a clever title for a video we could put together about what needs to be done but i forget the title <laughs> but no agreed and and i think um it's always hard to say oh your roof is linking and your you know your floors are falling apart whatever it's a 60 year old building both of them right so we we recognize that a lot of the systems have exceeded their useful life that they, they do right look at your house how many times have you had to replace things same thing with the windows your energy code now so for for all of the um great things that you you've really tried to maintain these assets they really have exceeded the useful life mm -hmm. and, and i think that needs to be the message so that people don't go oh well you just said we have shiny pretty floors right you don't we're good with this so coupled with what needs to be done to these buildings to maintain them as assets for the next 10, 20, 40 years, and then couple that with your educational deficiencies in these buildings. That needs to be kind of the story as we try to move forward. And when we look at what is it gonna cost just to repair these buildings, you'll see that and see there's no educational benefit, right? But when we start looking at renovations and additions, which we, we understand that uh, Fox Hill School is, is not an ideal candidate for that, but um, and new construction, you'll see that you either put a lot of money into repairing a facility that still won't meet your educational needs, or put incrementally a little more, and, and that hopefully will provide you the flexibility for your educational program and a building that will hopefully be here 75 or longer and meet today's code requirements, energy requirements, sustainability requirements, be sensitive to the environment um, and, and really give these students an incredible learning opportunity. So that's sort of gonna be the story as, as we go through, but. Yeah, and you're right, those, those reports do get folded into a deliverable for the MSBA's process, right? The preliminary design program, which will be our first milestone. Um, so it will be included in that document, but to the extent that we can share that once it's out of draft form and it's finalized, um, I think that's a good item for the communications group to take up, make sure that um, if applicable to get it on the right spot of the website. So, you know, in a public project, it's hard to overshare, but you know, being strategic about where it is so folks can find it and, and getting communication out at the appropriate time. Thank you. So I think we, we don't have too much more exciting stuff to do. No, yes. <laughs> We're still on the fact finding. Um, the question you had mentioned uh, wetlands and working potentially with Wilmington, is that just with like their conservation or is that gonna be yeah. a butters as well? Well, if it, um, if it does get to that, their butters will likely, so if it does fold in Wilmington's process, their butters will likely need to be. It just depends on how, um, where it is right <laughs> so as we get more information we'll definitely share it thank you i do also want to say that um we have geotech information also okay. because during vacation week they did some uh, borings and some test pits and so we have very preliminary information we'll be adding the locations onto the survey once our surveyor gets going um, they did find a little bit of bedrock, some exposed uh, rock in one of the borings, some buried organics, um, but that's what we're, we're waiting for the final report. So again, once that's available, that can be shared. Maybe you want to tell people what buried organics is. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, buried organics is like if you have topsoil in layers that should have regular ordinary fill, right? So sometimes, uh, if you have farmland that in time has been changed, the uses have been changed, sometimes um, fill is just dumped on top of what used to be lawn. So lawn usually has topsoil and then it's just like getting too much into the weeds. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it, but it, but to say, say it's right. not a good um, layer to have for foundation. So we do geotech. Um, uh, testing so we can understand the characteristics of the soils to see what we need to do uh, to support 
foundations for a new building. Well, that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> We're going to go to great, but again, um, there wasn't a whole lot, but this is also preliminary. So as we get going into the design phases, we will be getting more information um, as soon as we kind of narrow down the best location for the building, you know, where we uh, presented some really pretty pictures and some initial thoughts. It's very likely that building is not going to be where we show it. But but with the with the organics or whatever, I mean that's just information to have so that we try to do as much site analysis early on so that we are prepared when we say here's a preliminary cost that we do understand some of those unknowns buried in the ground um, or that maybe we have to prepare the foundations a little differently or whatever. So it's not all great news, but at least we're informed and we'll be able to anticipate those costs if a certain location on the site really is the best location. And then we, we know what that little premium added cost is. So the more information we can gather up front is, is really just a better informed decision as we pick the location, the size, et cetera, et cetera, of the, of the preferred solution. Don, does it change your overall usability? Some of the early models had athletic fields and all that. Does that, does that limit the usable property that you have for even non-building? Features the organics, no. for, yeah, organics for, not for the, the wetlands may for the that's what I'm asking for wetlands or something. The wetlands may limit us more than what we thought in terms of how far out we can build um, beyond the parking lot. Mm -hmm. We were never thinking we would cut trees down, but um, I think the wetlands kind of do encroach beyond the tree line a little bit. So and it's not the wetlands, but it's the buffer zones, right? Right. So again, mm -hmm. um, if there's a vernal pool that has a different setback or um, buffer requirement than just your typical um, uh, wetland. So it might be 200 feet versus 100. So those are things that we're going to. to but a lot of times in working with conservation commissions, if it's previously been um, modified or, or used disturbed. or disturbed as a field or open space or yeah. whatever that it's fine to reuse it in, in that form. So um, I none of this is um, really going to impact the, the overall approach and um, how, you know, kind of our vision for the site. Uh, we still want to look at different locations on the site. And, and make sure that with all of this information that we have the best informed, dis uh, all of us make these decisions collectively. But I think we have to also understand some of the bylaws and all of the constraints that Conservation Commission um, is going to say what we can do within a hundred foot buffer per se. Yeah, right, and not to be the skunk at the garden party, but you mentioned not cutting down trees, and I'm wondering, is that why not? Um, because it's such a beautiful resource, but <laughs> I'm not saying we're not saying we're not cutting any down. We're just saying we're not going to, you know, cut. cut up those areas where there are beautiful trails. And well, I understand, but I guess I don't don't make the assumption that the trees are well managed now. I think yeah. if if they're just growing because they're growing, sure, you might need to cut some down just to manage them more. Absolutely, to actually benefit some of the other trees that are there. So. No. Uh, so it's not a rule that we can't cut down trees. Right. Okay. But understood, but also understanding that there's conservation and trails that we want to connect. Um, and, and there are going to be trees that need to come down because they're not healthy. So mm -hmm. we'll, you know, as we get into design, we will have an arborist come take a look at what's there to really let us know what can and can't or should and shouldn't be done. But understanding that, okay, there's nothing sacred. However, there may be wetlands that <laughs> really restrict what we want to do in terms of site. But no, no clear. It's not our intention to clear cut anywhere, but certainly is a there collective. A, is there a tree ordinance in town that anyone's aware of? Nope. Yeah, but to tamper with the trees at your risk, I think. Yeah, that's usually <laughs> you know, enough. Yeah. It like happens trees. a lot. Yeah. 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 
But I think, I mean, your general and first impression is a lot like mine. It's such a large open site. You wouldn't have to imagine. There's so much space. Right. Why would we need to? But, but that's just, just the reason why you do these exercises. I guess I'm saying if you're placing the building for 50 to 75 years and there are some trees that might need to be relocated and replanted, I'm just saying I would rather place the building in the best scenario and sort of manage the property don't assume that the property is sort of well managed now we don't have a forester in the district sort of doing this work so it's sort of random as it is and again i understand every tree is sacred it just you know driving by the mall roger sort of makes me think that there's a lot of pavement there too so so uh, i i again, yeah, i wouldn't say you don't cut down trees but I so think, right. yeah, yeah. And in, in 50 and 75 years, you actually can grow more trees. The ones that are there are probably in that age range. Yes. They're not a lot older than that, most of them. So. Good point. Okay. Anything further on existing conditions or comments, questions? My turn. I just want to make sure we've yeah. silenced for long yeah, enough. Yeah, freedom of lunch. So yeah, we can move well, on. Bob, you're looking at the WebEx, right? Yeah, no, that's okay. not that I see. Okay, fine. So, yeah, I don't know if you want to give an update on, I guess, mm -hmm. the meeting. And oh, yeah. So, um, so we had a, a kind of kickoff educational visioning meeting um, today with um, the uh, leadership team of uh, Burlington Public Schools. It was fun. Um, I think so. I'm not speaking <laughs> for everyone here. That was one of the poll questions. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, should, I should say I, I thought it was fun. That's what I, I love getting into that stuff. So um, this will be a series of visioning sessions. We're going to meet with uh, the Fox Hill staff, uh, the 22nd, the Pine Glen staff, the 29th. We're going to regroup and then have a, another workshop with kind of an extended group um, just to just to make sure that some community leaders, CPAC and, and some others um, have an opportunity to weigh in as well. Um, the educational program is and, and once we have all of this information, it, it hopefully will be very helpful as we start talking to the community and realizing what the goals and priorities are for this project and what we uh, really want to try to achieve educationally as it relates to the Fox Hill School pro project. Um, the ed program, we're working together, um, um, Danisco and um, Eric and, and his group, and we're pulling all of that together. It's going to take some time. It's going to be back and forth. We want to make sure that we have an opportunity to talk to everyone from special ed to transportation to that there's everyone involved in this too. I hear Whitson's is now on um, staff, so we'll want to reach out to them. So it really touches on a lot of different components and um, that will probably take, I'm going to say a good three, three weeks to a month to hash out. But so, so that's in the works as well. Eric, did you guys have fun today? We did. Actually. <laughs> it's fun to be aspirational with to talk about uh, teaching space, and so it, it really seems like a fixed feature of, you know, you never think you're going to get a new building, so mm -hmm. it seems like a fixed feature. Mm -hmm. So it is fun. We had what an outdoor movie theater, right? For yeah. <laughs> yeah. Had, uh, yeah. Water features. Water features. Uh, uh, a new skating rink, I think. Someone oh. wanted so yeah, <laughs> garage doors. Garage doors. Garage doors. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, pizza oven, a maple grove. <laughs> oh, the maple grove. Yeah. Yeah. We can cut the trees in the maple grove. Yeah. yeah. Go charter sure. track for sugaring. Sure. Yeah. So. This is the phase in which you don't say no. <laughs> yeah, right. This is what we call blue sky ideas. Yeah, yeah. So it was, uh, you never know. Water features, yeah. The roof deck. That was oh, cool. the roof deck. Roof deck. Yeah, the pool. I did not hear it's Starbucks or a coffee shop no. or. That's because we just got the coffee truck. They could just pull right up. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yes. No, so it, it's it's great. It's informative. It helps us get to know you as a community. It helps us understand 
what the goals are, spatial relationships, adjacencies, and it all feeds into uh, how to make the educational program document MSBA um, really be the best that it could be. So it was fun. Yeah, one thing I found really helpful when uh, David Stephen mentioned, you know, it's it's at the end del delivering kind of a set of goals and aspirations for the project. So it's always helpful to kind of start with the end in mind. So when we get to the end, we understand if if we did a good job or not. And so that's, I think, one of the biggest things that I find helpful from David's process is it really condenses hours upon hours and uh, so much information into a list of you know goal statements and uh, it just does a really good job of organizing that for for folks to understand and uh, that's something that we can keep you know in front of us throughout the whole process to make sure we're on track whether there's a slide or a starbucks in there we don't know mm -hmm. but no i i can tell you there's probably there's pro well, there'll be a slide there'll, there'll definitely be slides although i don't think they, yeah they put slides in the playground yeah, still. Any other comments? I don't want to. No, go ahead. Step yeah, out, go step ahead. Over. I can't see. Yeah. Um, so the next one is just the working groups update. Um, so just one one update here. Roger had asked to be part of the sustainability working group. So this just reflects um, Roger being added uh, as we continue to go through this process. These groups are becoming more involved at the time um, necessary for each group. So, you know, we'll get to it in a little bit, but for example, we're going to be touching base again with the communications working group uh, as we start heading towards our first community meeting. Um, this is just kind of a standing. Yeah, I think it's worth noting that the communication did go out. I, I, I was going to get to that when we get Sorry. to the website. No, okay. you just feel free to take it over. We can yeah. jump right to it. Um, yeah, we sent the letter from Dr. Conti and I went out to all the staff. Um, a week ago, Friday, or just this past it's Friday. Thursday. Okay. <laughs> um, and then the, went out to all the parents. It, I, somebody said it went out to this the town. Amy, Amy sent it out to yes. the town. Yeah. Um, I sent it to BCAT. I haven't got a response from them yet, but uh, Jen has it. Um, Marge at the senior center has it. They the newsletter gets written on the eleventh. Um, goes out on the 11th, I believe. So um, I think that was all the bases we wanted to cover. Um, did I see hits somewhere or views on the website? Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was a couple hundred. I don't know where. Oh. Did I make that up? In, in, can you pull that while we're sitting here? Yeah, give me, give me a minute. I was gonna pull all it right. up. <laughs> I made it. But, <laughs> but this is this is a. I mean, we'll consider. This really a, a kind of a milestone where we're officially out in the public with the website as you can see all the languages have been you know officially integrated as well so thank you for approving that last month so kind of a kind of a big note and as we go through you know we'll be updating this monthly with some of the information we talked about the existing conditions once that report's finalized that it, that can go up here on the website for the public to see um, so it's good to start getting the community involved and get them a Consistent location, they can always go back for the facts. Did you? The uh, contact info on the website. Does, will we get summaries of the kinds of things that have been asked, or do they go to the communications? So they will come back. I believe it's directly to Aiden. Aiden will get them. We'll talk about the communication. I believe it's Aiden. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah, it is. I think it's uh, me, Mike, and Christina who get them. Did you get any? Hate mail? It's a little early. Okay. I have I have not seen any on my end yet. No, I haven't seen any either. Yeah, there's it's not a lot no. up yet, so you typically don't get a ton of questions at this stage. Um, but yes, there is a a location for anyone to ask questions. We'll get emails and update or bring it back to you if, if we need further information. And to answer the question earlier, past month, five hundred and four visitors. Good morning. And I saw you pulled up that memo. Yeah, I just I didn't put that in here, but so I just happened to those at home not sharing my screen. This is Bob, but um, I just was showing the website here on the screen, and um, this is the letter that went out. It's under the community outreach section of the uh, Fox Hill School Building Project. 
.com website. No, no school, foxhillbuildingproject.com. Yes, correct. Foxhillbuildingproject.com. Yes. Now you have 501. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't submit any questions. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Um, oh, Roger, there is a contact page, um, name, email, subject, message. Yeah, I saw that. I just was curious. Oh, oh it, through to it comes back to our team, so yeah. we'll get those questions Great. and either ask the necessary questions if we need to go back to, you know, Danesco or anyone here or respond to them accordingly. Great. Uh, and the next one is, um, our next topic is upcoming dates. So I just want to kind of share where we are going forward here in the project. So uh, a little timeline for you, Steve. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, I'll run through it really quickly. Um, so just from a really high level, if you can see the slide on the screen, the, the two lanes in blue are, are the feasibility study, the current phase we're in right now, and that's broken into two separate kind of sub phases. And this is working with the MSBA process. And so the, the first kind of lane at the top is the preliminary design program, the PDP. Um, actually, maybe something we could add to the website is a, a glossary of terms. We're gonna be speaking in a lot of yes. abbreviations, yeah. so we could uh, uh, start to add those to the website as well. Um, but the PDP is shown there in the blue bar at the top, and it's just a really high level of um, some of the activities um, that a lot of which we already spoke about tonight. Uh, that'll be happening over the next couple of months. That's, you know, the evaluation of the existing conditions from traffic to the survey to the geotechnical information, which uh, which Donna and, and Vivian spoke about, condensing that into reports and feeding that information into how that might start to inform some options. And so the PDP phase kind of wraps up with throwing everything against the wall. Here are potential options, multiple enrollments, consolidation, site development options, condensing that into a, 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 say a bunch of options, a list of options or a group of options for each of those enrollments um, in different studies. And so um, we we submit to the MSBA this, this document. There's no board meeting that that goes in front of, so we don't have any submittal dates. Uh, we just notify them when we plan to submit and make that um, make that submission. There is an important vote before we do submit to have this committee's approval for us to submit that on the town's behalf. So we're going to dig in a little bit more working with the town. If there's any other approvals we need, whether it's school committee or any other boards, select boards, anything of that nature. Um, the MSBA tries to get themselves out of hot water by uh, requiring the building committees formation so it needs to conform with local bylaws and, and statute but if there are other um, bodies that need to meet to um, to make that recommendation we'll start to tease that out and make sure we have those um, uh, incorporated into the process so like I'm just yep. is that you're saying is that July am I reading that chart correctly so that's for July, submitting to uh, MSBA so you'll June, have all that information June, yep. in June one. Six yep. one. Yep. So that first, uh, the black diamond there at the uh, bottom of the first horizontal line, it's a little small on the screen. So, um, Don, I, I don't see us having any public forums ahead of having all that information. Okay, you know, because that's what the questions are going to be, right. my, my guess. Yeah. So, somewhere around kind of the, the last third of that PDP timeframe is sometimes when you start to solicit and just start to a lot of, um, again, the fact finding that you may not have any conclusions from that. And so maybe that's your point, Eric, is maybe we don't approach that, you know, community forum without some of those answers yet. Um, but typically that's a good time just to kind of say, here's what we've found so far. You know, not that any folks can't attend any of the building committee meetings, but sometimes advertising a more wide open um, publicly, you know, advertised forum just gets a little more attention. <laughs> Sometimes there's only eight or nine folks that show up, and sometimes there's 30 or 40. So um, that's something that's not um, set in stone, although the MSBA does ask for other than building committee mm -hmm. meetings and school committee meetings, what other meetings have been held publicly to solicit some feedback and share progress on the project. So, well, again, I just don't want to conflate the two. So the 
educational programming meeting that just took place is more about what is elementary, what is our elementary program, what does elementary education look like in Burlington across all the elementary schools. So that that sort of um, Fox Hill is one of four elementary schools now. The public forums, again, I believe there's going to be a lot of conversation about um, do we have four elementary schools or three elementary schools? What are, what's the financial implication of renovation versus mm -hmm. consolidation? Um, and then uh, again, Paul, you had mentioned a couple of times about keeping the existing Fox, skill, Fox Hill School, what it's gonna cost to bring that school then up. Is it cheaper just to build another mm -hmm. facility? I mean, I think those are the questions that I believe you're gonna get are gonna be very technical and so I don't think it makes sense to have a public forum until you have answers to those mm -hmm. questions in a direction that you're gonna, then you're gonna recommend. Um, again, the visioning, the the programmatic pieces and sort of what instruction looks like and what spaces need to be next to other spaces for teachers. I, again, I don't think that's a public forum conversation. And the PDP says we choose three versus four, renovate, repair. Not necessarily. No, no. Okay. So, no. so I think, I think um, Eric, t to your point, um, Every community is a little different, right? And and every everyone, um, some some communities maybe have uh, less um, options to consider, uh, less discussions. If it's only two elementary schools in town, I mean that's an easier discussion mm -hmm. than if there's four, maybe going to two or you know, how, how is this, everything that Burlington is facing? So, you know, 100% we want to follow your lead and your understanding of it. The preliminary design program that we submit to the MSBA is the education program, the space summaries, which is the space required to support your educational program for Fox Hill alone and for the combined two schools. And then pre, very preliminary, like, uh, costing of all the six options. It's going to be repair, you know, repair only, reno add, new for Fox Hill, and then you double that when you combine the two. Uh, very preliminary. At, at PDP, some communities say, we know what we want, right? We, we know the rough order of magnitude costs. We know that a new school makes more sense than a renovation and forget about repair, but uh, and, and we know that we only want it to be one school. We don't want to combine them. You, you can put that out to MSBA or PDP and say, our, we, we don't want to study anything else. Here's our preferred solution now. Or you can say, repairs don't make sense. So we want to take those options off the table, but we still want to continue to explore all the other options. That's a decision you all, can make. Um, you can take them all but one off the table at PDP or keep them all on and say, you know, we still want to keep exploring everything. Um, but what your response back from MSBA will be, we agree with your educational program and here's the space summary. Here's, here's the amount of educational programming space that we will agree to for both enrollments. So, so you don't know decisions absolutely categorically have to be made at PDP other than the submission of the ed program. So I guess then let me ask a question and then I promise I'll stop talking. No, no. When do you suggest a full public forum take place? Because June isn't that far away. Summers are going to be summers. I mean, would you say in the fall, September, October is when we have a community forum about this type of information? Um, does this committee make that decision? Um, do we even need to have a public forum? Um, so every, I, I, I would, I would, so Steve and I could recommend, um, I, the PDP, typically we go before the school committee before we submit the preliminary design program just for them to weigh in on, although we're here, but uh, the educational program. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for them to say, yes, we agree and, you know, it's it's more appropriate for them to say we need all of these spaces. So that I don't know many people show up to school committee meetings anymore. So that would be uh, that's one opportunity for people to hear. If if we submit to MSBA the PDP and just say at that point in time we're just bringing you along. This is what we know. This is what we we have 
uncovered during the three months of our investigations, and this is everything that's still on the table, we'll be back. But what are some of your thoughts right now? We haven't made any decisions yet. What are some of your thoughts? So sometimes we try to do it at every milestone that we submit to MSBA, just to at least say, this is what we know. We don't have all the answers, but we'd like to hear what your thoughts and concerns are so that we're not making decisions without hearing from you. Uh, so typically we would do one at PDP. We would do one before we submit the PSR in June, because at that point you're saying, here's our preferred solution. So we absolutely should be before the community before we submit the preferred the, um, PSR. PSR. That's uh, the December. we've hit. Oh, that's December. 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 December not soliciting any feedback prior then would would anybody feel left out or is there information that could have been uncovered had it been asked that would have been helpful to inject into some of those options and some of the evaluations of the alternatives so. i'm not wedded to one idea and i think it is difficult to have meetings public meetings when we don't have answers and i also think that if we can be clear that we're submitting this PDP. This is the information we found. We don't have answers yet. I think I lean at this point toward having some kind of a public forum that would share information with the community because there's going to always be people who want to have their say or want to know what's going on. And I think the more I'm, I'm inclined to say, the more we share, there's been one of the things that's a history in Burlington is there is a core of people who feel there hasn't been transparency. Mm -hmm. I'm I would like us to err on the side of transparency. I understand there are difficulties when you don't have answers and, and that kind of thing. So I just wanted to throw that out. I think having, you know, every couple of months at, at different formats and not just when we're having to make final decisions and things like mm -hmm. well, not when we have all the information. So that's my two cents. And, uh, and I just want to, I think everyone knows, I think that 6-1 um, is June 1st and then June 15th is our last day of school. Mm -hmm. So basically the whole town goes on summer break. Uh, finding parents, finding residents is a little bit more difficult as Dr. County mentioned. They're available, but you know, a little bit harder in that once yeah, we get past I, that two week window. And I think, you know, um, over the summer, uh, we'll we'll still be working on the remaining options that are still on the table, so that you know that's that's great. It gives us time to really refine options and kind of, um, and then maybe once everyone's back at school, have a conversation about the fi final evaluation of alternatives. There may be one that really rises to the top, but we still probably want to vet them um, with the make sure the community is hearing that we're not making these decisions and then kind of. I mean, just reaching out to I them. think the school committee, oh, the school building committee votes, not the school. But the yeah, school well, that's another question. Can we clarify? Because there's the 530 and the 6 what if, I'm sorry, in the 428. So could you talk about the 428 school committee vote? Yeah, that was, um, Don had mentioned, again, it comes down to levels of authority. So that, like I said, the MSBA tries to get themselves out of, mm -hmm. um, you know, looping back on themselves so that if the if the building committee votes to submit the PDP that it has mm -hmm. all the necessary approvals. I think and agree with Donna's recommendation that typically just having the school committee vote on the educational program um, in space okay. summaries, you know, just because that's really more under their purview of what's going into the school and, and how much space is dedicated for each of the programs, it really kind of just checks that box, you know, to make sure it's checked. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes building committees don't have the level of rep representation from the school committee. So again, it's to avoid any possibility of, um, you know, skipping over that step and, and having to double back, which the MSBA process is very much about moving forward. So some of these key decisions, it's mm -hmm. it's a one it's a one way doorway. So 
if I understand correctly, there would be a vote at school committee regarding the PDP and those two areas. The I'm sorry, regarding the educational program and the space summary, and then the school building committee would have that vote as well. Yep. So that would, yeah, exactly. So the building committee has the, you know, confidence that those items have, you know, mm -hmm. gone under review from the school committee. They've passed, and. For instance, the vote with the gold star there for the, the, mm -hmm. the building committee vote, mm -hmm. that's purely for us to submit the PDP. So that's okay. we get a draft of the P, PDP mm -hmm. document in all your hands well in advance, you know, at least mm -hmm. a week, sometimes more if sections become available. Um, so you have an ample time to review it, and then we'd arrive at, at the meeting. Um, so the date at 530, which is a Tuesday, should be right. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then we submit the actually, PDP. but that wouldn't be the sec is that the fourth it, it, that would probably we can talk about the timing you for that confirm one that it's one of our yeah. meetings. Yeah. Um, if we need a special one off schedule. Um, yeah, sometimes these do require yeah. off schedule meetings for these type of okay. votes just to okay. stay within our I mean, I think between the two, if there's a school committee vote and then a month later, there's a school building committee vote, both of which are public meetings. Mm -hmm. That should be ample community opportunity, um, especially if we outline that. And you're presenting, I would imagine, on that 28th, you would present something so people would watch it. So we could that. publicize yeah. that yeah. school committee meeting yes. as one of our public forums. Yes. yes. Okay. And, and, and yeah. same, same for this, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and right at the end of PDP is the first time we have some very preliminary budget numbers for construction costs because the, part of the submittal is what options do we have available to us in roughly order of magnitude, how much are they gonna cost? So it's it's really by square foot cost or even maybe a step above that to put a range on, um, not just a range, but then just to compare option to option um, because construction is, is so far off and there's just so many decisions left to be made, but it is the first time that uh, we'll have to submit some cost information to the MSBA. Um, so we talked a lot about the PDP. One last thing about the community meeting that we often include in that phase, if we should have one, is it's really just setting expectations to the public. It's, you know, understanding, kind of giving them an education of the MSBA process if, they, if they're not aware of it, where their money comes from, the grant program, going over some of the milestones and just kind of putting, it's a five to six to seven year process, but over the next year, you know, I what's on the screen now, here's where we are to kind of take bite sized chunks of it. And we plan to see you next time in PSR where we'll have some more information. So whatever that, you know, community forum schedule might be, we can just set expectations, even though uh, there might be some concern about maybe not having a lot of answers in terms of what we've found so far. And um, timing wise, did we still want to talk about like a table at town meeting or a table on the election day? Like, I think those are also opportunities for like a fly or, and some basic questions. election day is the first. Mm -hmm. yeah, so April. I don't know if that's too soon. Can you use that to advertise the school committee? Um, meeting? I think that's too soon. Jen, it would be the consultant having the table, not the school committee. No, I was saying if it's April 1st, we advertise the old form piece at, at the school committee on the 28th. It's two months. Right, I'm just saying if he they want to talk like have like an informational oh, okay. either at town meeting or I think that's a media election day just to say like show this timeline. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what your thoughts are on those times. We can if it's we can make ourselves available if you know that's where a lot of folks are gonna be, you know, showing up. It's not there's nothing on the on the warrant to talk about the project necessarily or and <laughs> it's really just for informational purposes. If people might get curious, you know. Share the website, just be available that night to, to offer any support. Anyone else have thoughts? I think John was stretching. Can we verify he wasn't waiting? <laughs> yeah, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay. I don't think he has that first. I don't think I, I like enough information to really say anything. We're certainly not to ask somebody to be around for most of election day. Is so that when is election day? April 1st. April 1st. Three weeks. Yeah. So nothing, there's, but there's town probably, meeting on. May 8th. May 8th is town meeting and having that's a shorter. It could be for an hour before town meeting. Yeah, it's just a much, yeah. much smaller but audience. Yeah, yeah, an audience, right? So, um, 
there one vote? Okay, we can do neither. Kristen. No. Well, no, I, I think I think it's there one vote one, Kristen. Yes, yeah. 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 Does may yeah. it sound too soon to have information that would be valuable to community members? Yeah. Sounds I, I, too yeah. soon. Okay. So so even so again, me. yeah, I think I think the PDP and the only reason why we are we're we're suggesting a community forum is just some communities really want to be in front of this at all times and give people information even when there's really not information to give. Mm -hmm. Other communities say don't waste people's time to come when there's nothing really to share. And so um, I we, we want to be respectful of people's time and, and effort. So um, you know again at PDP um, Depending on what gets uncovered over the next month or so, will that determine if we even think any of the options, maybe with the exception of repairs, um, come off the table? And if they don't come off the table, then there's not a whole lot of information to share with the community. Um, so maybe I could suggest, I like your idea, Melissa, but maybe, I, I just looked it up, May 30th is not a regularly scheduled school committee meeting. But perhaps Still we good. could could schedule one that would involve, and I don't know which order would be the right way, but that we'd have the presentation and we would vote on the parts that we're voting on and and, and people could come. That's the 28th. School committee is April 28th. April. It's the April one. Yes, yeah, school uh, building committee. Okay, is sorry. sorry. We'd have to create, I, I think, the meeting to wrong. vote. The school building committee would have to people schedule committee. this. Mm -hmm. yes, April 28th is a Friday. Yeah, correct. April 28th is a Friday. Oh, all right. So that's so is that the intention? No. Okay. So uh, we should figure that out. They can okay. figure that out. And okay. that's too soon also. I actually think yeah. we only have one school school committee meeting in April. I'm no, we have two. We have school committee on the eleventh and on the twenty-fifth. Unless you so want in May, though. Oh, May 9th. But we, and we have May 9th, which is only a day later than the town meeting where you said it was too soon. Yeah. Now, I think I'd suggest listening to the questions that people ask to decide when to schedule a, Ooh, a public okay. meeting. All right. Because um, okay. if they're not asking, then we shouldn't go out of our way to tell them stuff we don't, I'm not certain about. Yeah, I mean, these are all public meetings, so we're not being non transparent. Right. Yeah. Um, Yep. But, okay, we'll just change that school committee vote date to either the end of April or the beginning of May. Um, and one of the, those dates will have a presentation that we can overemphasize as far as the school committee meeting mm -hmm. goes. Okay. So the options were 425 or May 8th? Or whatever the Tuesday. I have five nine. Five nine. Oh, nine. okay. Sorry. Five nine. Tuesday. Yes. I don't have it. That still gives us plenty of time if our goal is to submit PDP <coughs> by June one. Yep. Okay. Good. So maybe just to wrap up the timeline conversation, the, the middle lane is the, uh, the PSR. That's the taking all the options generated in the PDP, putting each of them under a microscope or the ones that remain that haven't come off the table yet, uh, and really drilling down to one singular preferred option. And so that's uh, this one. We do have to prepare for an MSBA board meeting. The board meets to review project scope um, and budget. Um, and make a recommendation to approve that one option for schematic design. So um, the board meetings are on a very specific schedule. So you'll see there's quite a bit of distance between the, again, that second black diamond on, what is that, 1220? 220. Uh, it's a 1220 submittal date. Oh, yeah. So yeah. the MSBA has about eight weeks to review to prepare for the board meeting. Okay. Um, and upon their review, and uh, again, if it gets to the board meeting, it's usually a rubber stamp by that point because the eight weeks are okay. them doing their due diligence, asking questions, and um, getting our feedback. Uh, and that would kick us off into schematic design, which is um, really drilling down to systems um, and establishing the project scope and budget at the end of schematic design. So that's where. Um, 
that's where the MSBA's uh, grant is finalized. So we really, when folks that are in the design and construction industry, schematic design typically is a little looser and more nebulous, but in MSBA's um, program, it's, it's very specific and a pretty high level um, level of detail for a schematic design set. So, um, Steve, can I just ask, has MSBA confirmed that's the date for the PSR or that's still tentative? Because I don't think they've issued the 2024. It's tough. It's tentative. 2024 is right. Yep. Right. Yeah. So yep. just everyone, the 1220, don't don't write that in Indeed. stone. I was just saying that was very kind yeah. of them not to have us work <laughs> over the holidays to submit to them. So um, <laughs> this year they did. So, <laughs> but so it's tentative and, until they yeah. publish there. Yeah, that next board schedule. Yep. Yeah. Good point. At what point in the schedule or after this, is it after the schedule where the town actually has to commit to um, fully fund it? That's right. For MSBA guidelines, after the board approval, the last R on the page, that sets off a 120 day window for the town to secure financing, um, which is another conversation in and itself, but that's per their statute, there's a window of time that after that board date. Um, <clears throat> You know, strategically, depending on you know the financing or you know what the what the plan is to help finance whatever the the preferred option is going to be. Sometimes that can happen. It can predate that, um, but it it certainly um, can extend no longer, or no further beyond the 120 days. And so, as we build the more detailed schedule, we can tell you when that date is. Once that board date's finalized, when when we know the MSBA's calendar. That sounds like a January town meeting thing. Mm. Yeah, I know it's the ways out there. Yeah, and there's conversations of the timing of that, or, you know, a special, uh, it's not special election. Today. So, we um, do have a fall town meeting. There's one in September, September uh, and January. September, January, January right May. late September. Huh. So then you could, you yeah. could, you could fall, you you could get the vote before. Some communities before. actually have the vote before MSBA votes to approve it. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's a possibility. Yeah. I didn't know whether they required funding before they would approve it, which I think is. It's, it's in the earliest problem. stage of the process. They require you to fund. Oh, this uh, before no, this is the process. other. So you could okay. you could go in front. You can go before the MSBA board votes for the uh, for the project open budget, or you can do it, but it cannot be more than 120 days after. But there are okay. many communities that do it ahead of time. Right. That's. Kind of in the future. It is in the future, but I don't. I mean, we already have how many town meetings? Three. Yeah. Three. So to add another one, <laughs> we should be able to make it work. With um, I'm hoping we can make it work within your. Yeah. Year so can, we have one in January. So just. So I mean, are you saying you do it in September? Yeah. Oh, you think September would we could have it? Ready? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, you should if we're submitting it in August. 2024. Oh, oh, right. No, we no. start August. Okay. Oh, no. And the board yeah. votes in 2024. Right. So, yeah. No, we're not. Minute. Minute. We're talking January 2024. We're talking. Not, not yeah. September 2024. Well, different. Yeah, I'm saying it's, yeah. it's a ways out. It, yeah. You know, I think there are ways around it. You already have three yeah. meet town meetings yeah. a year. I don't know what's the fourth. I'll defer to you all. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Paul, well, every time we've talked about how many times we have, you think we have two. Many. We do. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so there's a way. Um, there's so there's somehow that would probably be a good thing. But anyway, anyway. And then obviously so that's the point at which the community yeah, but, to the town. But this scout calendar yeah. Yeah. says that the NSBA is, but we need to do it. So everything, important. everything between now and the end of 2024, that's within the feasibility and schematic design budget. Everything the town's already allocated for the project. So. To your point, that discussion about you know funding a larger project that's okay. everything beyond you know, what's shown on the page in, in okay. 2025 and beyond. December of 20, October 2024. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Right there. Yep. Second slide. It's a long. 10 That September. Got it. Yeah. 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 So something to try for. This is a two year schedule here. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Any uh, other comments, questions, confusions? <laughs> no. Okay.
Oh, Bob, is he sharing the right? Um, oh, enough. who's sharing? Oh, sorry. Um, so then just a couple of upcoming dates. So uh, we have a kickoff meeting with the MSBA this Thursday. So that's just now that Denise goes on board, just kind of, and we're going to go over the schedule like that. Um, that's this Thursday. Uh, upcoming, we have a couple of executive working group meetings coming up on the 22nd and the 5th. So building tours, I know that's something that you know we want to schedule. We will be working on that over the course of the next month. Uh, it just wasn't the right time this past month. Educational programming, I think you've heard throughout the process. We have a couple of those meetings coming up over the course of this next month. That was the 22nd, 29th. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what I just heard here is communi the community the community meeting we are not going to hold. We're going to invite them to the school committee meeting. So and school, school building. and school, school building, building committees. No, oh, there's two. We talked about the celebrity meeting. Sorry, no, I'm now meeting. getting onto the just a general community meeting. So they, we just the meeting we just discussed oh. about not having enough community yeah. 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 Right. So right. I guess disregard the last. No, no, no. Okay. Um, those are just kind of some of the upcoming meetings that we have. Can you clarify then? So, um, on the educational programming working group, um, is that a educational programming visioning conversation with principals, departments, et cetera? Um, is that something I would be at as part of the other people or? Yeah, so, so today's meeting was just the, um, the leadership group and in that we had discussed the future upcoming so there's been no correspondence on those two dates we kind of made that decision today on it if you will so you'll see correspondence for invites to those meetings um so yeah it may and that's march 22nd and 29th no so again those march 22nd 29th are for the fox hill staff and the pine glen staff okay. we are going to have another visioning meeting for um, community members, and um, um, we would include anyone on that subcommittee in that one. Mm -hmm. And so that'll be again visioning. That's different from a forum or the meetings mm -hmm. that we just talked about. So um, and where, there are going to be four. We've had one. We're going to do Fox Hill, Pine Glen, and a community one. And I actually think we're going to have a summary one too. So maybe mm -hmm. five. So yeah. So you will get invited to it. Um, Um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, anything that anybody has that we didn't already discuss that they want to bring up? Yeah. And the last one is our upcoming SBC meeting. So uh, the hybrid meeting law is actually due to be up March 31st. So we will need to meet in person. It is with the House, I believe, or the Senate for review and extension. Um, they have not publicly come out and weighed in one way or the other. So if that changes, we'll let everybody know. But as of right now, um, we need to plan to be in person on April 4th and moving forward based on the open meeting law. And then adjourn. Motion. Any motion to adjourn? Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Got your thumbs up on the screen. All right. Meeting adjourned. All right. Okay. Anyone opposed? Anyone opposed? Aye. 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 Aye